Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Today we got something awesome. We're going to create the enemies on our Do to Jump game. And so we're going to put a little bit of scripts on these enemies so that they move. And are we going to create a trigger zone for them? Like yeah. a trigger box on them? They're going to have a box collider, they're going to have animation, and we're going to write a little bit of code so that when your main character runs into one of these monsters, it causes a game over screen. We're now going to show you how to code the monster for our Doodle Jump game. The first thing that we'll need to do is create a game object. So we'll go to the top and click on Game Object, Create Empty. Then we'll need to make sure that it's centered in our scene. So 0, 0, and for the Z we're going to type negative 0.5. Then we're going to need to add a sprite, so we'll go 2D object, sprite, and then we're going to click on it and make it a child of the game object. Now we'll make sure that it's center on our game object. Now we're going to rename these objects. So the first one we'll call monster1, and the sprite we'll call monster sprite. Then we'll need to select the exact sprite that we want to use for our monster. And I'm going to use this one here. So we'll drag it into the sprite field under sprite renderer. You can see that it's fairly big, so we're going to scale it down. And I'm going to go with 0.3. Once we have it scaled down, we're going to need to add a couple components. The first one is under physics 2D and it's box collider 2D. We'll make sure that trigger is selected, and we'll also want to make sure that we like the scale of our box collider. So I'll scale it down in the x direction so that it's more just on his body and it more or less excludes his wings. Once you have the box collider added and it's scaled properly and its trigger is set, we're going to need to add an animation. So under mis miscellaneous, we're going to click on animation. Then we'll go ahead and open up the animation window. Once we have the animation window, we'll click on create, and under our animation folder, we'll add the monster one animation. Then we'll need to click on add properties, and under transform, we'll click on position. Now we'll select all the first keyframes, copy them, and paste them every 20 frames. Then at the 10 second mark, we'll add another keyframe by changing its Y position by moving it up. Then we'll select those keyframes and paste them every 20 seconds from the 10 second mark. Now we'll finish our animation by clicking the record button. We'll go to our animations folder, select our monster one animation and make sure that loop is selected. We'll go back to our monster sprite and drag in our monster one animation into the animation field on our animation component. So I'll go ahead and show you how much we have so far with this animation. So you can see that our monster just moves up and down, kind of like he's jumping or hopping. Now to finish this animation, I want to add the script that we used for our moving platforms. So I'll go to our prefab folder select our moving platform, and then I'll click on this gear sign and hit copy component. Then I'll go back to our monster one, I'll click on the gear sign and click on paste component as new. Then all we need to do is make sure that we select our monster one and drag it into the platform field on our script. Now as I hit play you'll see that our character has the hopping motion but also moves back and forth between the width of the screen. Now that we have the animation set for our monster, we're going to need to add a tag. So we'll click on tag and then add tag and we'll click the plus sign and then type monster. Now we'll go back to our monster game object and change the tag to monster. We'll also do it for our monster sprite. So now that we've finished all that, we're going to code the interaction between the monster and our main character. But before we do that, we're going to have to change a bit of the prefab we have for our main character. So in our prefabs folder, we'll select our box dude prefab and drag him into the scene. 
Now what we want to do is we want to duplicate our box dude and we'll delete our, the feet under the duplicated box dude and drag our box dude under our box dude prefab. Then we'll rename it to body and we'll remove the sprite renderer, the rigid body, but keep the box collider 2D. Then we'll need to add a tag and we'll call it body. We'll go back to our body and select that tag. Then we'll make sure that we select our box dude and hit apply. Now that we've modified our box dude prefab, we can go ahead and delete him from the scene. Next, we'll go ahead and create a new script for our main character. So we'll click on C sharp script and we'll call it body script. Then we'll open it up in model behavior. The first thing that we'll do is we'll delete our update and our start function. Then we'll need to go to the top under using.systemcollections. We'll type using system semicolon. Yeah. Now one of the principles that we'll be showing you today in this coding tutorial is relatively difficult, but bear with me and I'll explain it to the best of my ability and show you how it works. And if you're still confused after that, you can always ask us a question in the comments below. And in a future video, we'll show you more in depth concerning this topic. But what we'll be creating today is what's called an action. Now an action will broadcast from this current script to other scripts that we create. And then those scripts will receive the broadcast and execute code according to that broadcast. And so the first thing that we'll need to do is create the action. So we'll type public static action and carrots we'll type string close the carrots and then give it a name and we'll call it monster hit then below we'll need to access the on trigger function so on trigger enter 2d inside all right collider 2d and we'll call it other and then inside this function we'll say if other dot tag is equal to then monster because that's what we called our monster with the tag and then inside the if statement we'll say if monster hit does not equal null then we'll call monster hit and the string that we'll be broadcasting will be called dead now that's all we need to do for this script, so we'll go ahead and save it. We'll go back to Unity, and we'll need to create a platform script that will be on each platform. So we'll go create 2D script, we'll call it platform. Then we'll open it up in Modern Develop. Once it's in Modern Develop, we'll go ahead and delete the update function. And then we'll change the start function to on enable. And we'll also create a void on disable function. Now, in the on enable function, we'll need our platforms to be subscribing or listening to the broadcast from our monster hit action. So, to do this, we'll need to reference our body script. So, we'll type body script dot monster hit then we'll hit plus sign equal sign and then type monster hit again then semicolon and in the on disable function we'll need to unsubscribe to that broadcast so we'll copy the same line of code paste it and then we'll change this plus sign to a minus sign next we need to create a monster hit function but before we do that we're also going to create a variable so it'll be 
uh, public, and the type will be a box collider 2D, and we'll call it platform box. Now we'll create our monster hit function. So we'll go down below, we'll type void, mon and then spell it the same way, monster hit with the same capitals, and then in parentheses, we'll type string, because that's what's being broadcast, and then we'll type what was sent. And in the curly braces, we'll say if what was sent is equal to dead, because that's what we were broadcasting if our main character runs into the monster, then inside curly braces, we'll say platform box dot enable equals false. And this will make it so that when our main character runs into a monster, all the platform's box colliders will be turned off, making it that our main character will fall to his death, inevitably giving us the game over death sequence and game over screen. One thing that I forgot is we need to go back to our body script, and we are going to reference the main character feet script, and we'll call it feet script. We ultimately want him to stop midair and start falling. So to do this, we need to access the is jumping variable in our feet script and set it equal to false. So we'll type feet script dot is jumping and then say equals false. Then semicolon, we'll hit save. We'll also make sure that we save all. And that should be everything that we need to do. Now we'll go back to Unity. So the first thing, we'll go to our main character prefab, and on the body game object, which is child to our box dude, we'll need to add the body script that we made. Then we'll need to select the feet script, so we'll select our feet game object, drag it in. Next we'll need to make sure that our platform script is attached to all the platforms that we've created. So we'll click on it, drag it to our platform 1, then we'll click on our platform 1, We'll make sure that we drag our platform 1 into this variable so that we have our box collider selected. Then we'll hit apply. And we'll do the same for the other prefabs that we have. The disappearing platform. And the moving platform. You also want to make sure that each platform in your platform groups has this script attached. Now we'll go ahead and test the functions that we've made. Excellent! So right there you saw that the main character was able to jump on the platform, bounce, and then once he hit the main character, he wasn't able to land on the platform again and thus inevitably causing the game over to be triggered. Let's show you one more time. Now all we need to do is save our monster as a prefab. So we'll click on him and drag him into our prefabs folder. Once he's in our prefabs folder, you can go ahead and delete him from the scene view. Now in a previous video we showed you how to draw multiple monster sprites, and I'm not talking about the spaceship or the black hole, I'm talking about just the monsters. Now we're not going to show you how to create more monsters because it's relatively the same thing. So what I would do to create these monsters is drag in this monster prefab to your scene view, then change the sprite of the monster and change the animation. You might just want to have a monster that kind of vibrates back and forth but in the same area and doesn't move across the whole screen. So that's all we have for you on creating the monsters. But make sure that you save your scene and your project. We hope you enjoyed this video where we showed you how to create the monsters or the enemies for our Doodle Jump game. Yeah, please like and subscribe and let us know if you were able to follow along and learn this content. Yeah, a couple of things that were in this video were pretty difficult. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.